So it seems as though a number of people are complaining about the administration of a deceased estate. Why are they complaining? Complaining about a number of things, right? Uh, for instance, the administration is taking too long for whatever reason. And so the main question or the questions that they're posing are, you know, is there a different way in which we can do this? Can we avoid going through an administration of an estate? And number two, if we can't really, you know, uh, avoid administration of an estate entirely of our family member, are there better ways which we can plan our own affairs so that our own children don't have to go through this because they are going through flames, right? So we're going to talk about this shortly. We're going to talk about some of the alternatives that are out there so that you can avoid administration of a near state. And also we're going to talk about some of the things that you can put in place just so that you can make sure you don't suffer the same uh, fate that other people are suffering. For example, there's people that have administrate or deceased estates that have been or still uh, are being administered from the year 2019, others uh, more than six years. That's very frustrating. And there's a number of reasons why that is happening. So I just want us to talk about what you can do to make things better for your own children. So uh, for those so, that are new here, my name is Yolanda Mnyangeza and I'm an attorney and a director at Mnyangeza Attorneys. Let's get to the conversation. So, so is there an alternative here? Can we avoid going through an administration of an essay if we lose a family member? First things first, let's just explain what an administration of an estate is. So when somebody passes away, right, in terms of South African law, that estate that they have left behind must be administered. And when I speak about an estate, I talk about that person's debts, I talk about that person's assets, everything relating to them, that must be administered. Right. When I say administer now, I mean that, you know, creditors have to be notified. So and so has passed away. If you have a claim, come forward. Right. If this person was owing a certain department, those departments have to be paid. If there's certain monies that have to accrue to the estate due to the death of this person, you know, that collection must happen now and, and the money must be then distributed in accordance to all of the beneficiaries. So when we speak about an administration of an estate, we're talking about that whole process that has to happen when somebody passes away. Now, in terms of the law, it is a requirement that each and every one of us, you know, go through this. Particularly if you've got an estate that is above 250,000 rand, you're going to go through a very lengthy process. If the estate you are leaving behind is less than 250000 it's not going to be lengthy. It's just going to be a matter of reporting and getting a letter of authority and then just distributing what needs to be distributed. But when you're worth more than 250000 rand, then it's going to mean that the whole administration process, you know, is going to be a bit lengthy. So that in a nutshell is what an administration of an estate is. Can a person avoid it? Now, as I mentioned, in terms of South African law, every person who passes away, their estate has to be administered. But be that as it may, there is a way in which your family can avoid going through this. And that option is you setting up a trust right now and moving each and every one of your assets into that trust. What happens when you do this? So remember, when you move this property to the trust, it will mean that you have really minimal assets in your name, right? The major ones are in that particular trust. So when you pass away, in your name, there'll probably, let's say, be 20,000 Rand. If there's 20,000 Rand, what does this mean? As I explained to you, it's going to be a very short thing. It's going to be a matter of we're just reporting this person has passed away. You get the letter of authority and that's it. And whoever has to benefit will get that 20 grand. Whereas the rest of your things, you moved to this trust, which means that already your family has a way of benefiting from those things because the trust is in existence. It's operating. If you had stipulated that 
you know, in your trust deed, as soon as you die, maybe there's a certain way in which your beneficiaries are meant to be paid out or whatever the case is, that continues to happen. That trust doesn't have to go through an administration. It's not a person anymore. It's not you. It's, it's an entity that you have established for the benefit of your family. So even when you pass away, it's not going to have to go through hurdles and money's being stuck or money's being, you know, having to wait until a certain process is completed. That trust continues to exist as it has been, right? If when you were still alive, that trust was busy paying you and others 20 grand a month, it's going to continue. It's as if nothing has happened to you. So, which means that you then, or your estate, will then not go through the administration process. And your family will not have any lengthy process of administration to go through. Monies will be readily available and distributable. Uh, assets will already be in the trust and there will be a plan on how they can benefit already, you know, from those assets. So, utilizing a trust can help you avoid paying uh, or going through the administration process. And another thing that frustrates a lot of people about the administration process is the fact that it comes with costs, right? And a lot of people get surprises after they've passed away because often one of the things that they tend to do, right, is that they just draft a will and, and they don't think or have extensive estate planning to understand what are the cost implications? Because this administration process that we're talking about, you know, the administration of an estate, is something you have to pay for. Because like I said, there's going to be work that needs to be done. And so you need to know how these payments operate and the kind of executor that you've chosen and how they're going to operate and what your family can expect, right? Uh, which is something a lot of people tend to not think about, which also frustrates the whole administration process. So if you are saying to me right now, Yolanda, I cannot set up a trust. Is there a better way in which this can be handled so that the administration process is a bit seamless when I pass away? Well, there's a few things that I think you should do in order to make it a bit seamless and not as lengthy. Number one. So the first thing that you can do, um, obviously, is to go through an estate planning process. Why are you going through this planning process? Go through this process so that you know how much it's going to cost your family to administer that deceased estate of yours so that your family are not going to be stuck trying to run around trying to get money so that this estate is administered so that they can be able to benefit you need to make preparations on your side when you're still alive so that your family doesn't have to have a headache more especially when you are still responsible for people who are not yet you know self-sustainable so you want to make sure that there is a plan on how they're going to pay for these administration costs because there's a few line items, right? And it does get a bit expensive uh, depending on the things that you have in your estate, the value of your properties. So you want to attend that estate planning session. Now, the second thing that you want to do to make things easier for you is to draft the will. And when you're drafting this will, I want you to pay careful attention to who you nominate as your executor. Did you hear what I said? I want you to pay careful attention to who you nominate as your executor. Why? The reason why you want to pay careful attention to whom you nominate as your executor is because this is the person who's going to be going up and down trying to administer this estate. Your beneficiaries are going to be heavily reliant on this person. So if this person is, you know, taking their own time, they are so chilled about this, it will mean that the administration process is going to drag and your beneficiaries are going to suffer because remember in case uh, you were not aware during that time no money that you have left behind is accessible right if you had money in your bank account it's frozen and placed into an account we call an estate account so it, it, it's going to frustrate your beneficiaries because 
they can't get access to the things that they're meant to be benefiting from. So you need to make sure that this person you're naming as the executor, you know, they're going to move and they're going to move with your family. Your family can be able to communicate with them so that the process goes, you know, as fast as it possibly can under the circumstances. And on the note of um, the executorship, a lot of people get surprises after, you know, uh, they've lost a loved one, right? What kind of surprises do they get? They often hear after that, you know, automatically by going to a certain somebody, that person ended up being the executor of the whole, you know, the whole world. And people would be surprised. How does this happen? How is it that this person who drafted this will for me is now my executor? Well, in some instances, you have to note that when you're going to, let's say, to certain people who are offering to draft the will for you for free, it does happen that they nominate themselves as your executor. And this is a way of them remunerating themselves should something happen to you. Now, this tends to be a problem because a lot of people never thought about it that way. They never understood it. So you also want to be sure that the person whom is drafting your will is the person whom you want to be the executor of your will, right? So that, you know, your family doesn't get surprises because other people are like, no, that's not what I had intended. I just wanted a will. So I heard they were drafting a free will, then I went. So that person, or when you are drafting a will, you need to know the kind of, you know, power you're giving to the person who's drafting are they nominating themselves as the executor because if they are your family will not have a choice they will have to use them as the executor and if they're not the ideal or they're the people that you had in mind that you wanted as your executor unfortunately your family is going to be stuck with that particular person or those persons right and then another thing that is going to help you which is, I think, the last thing I'm going to speak about that's going to help this administration process to be a bit easier, is to ensure that when you're passing away, all of the relevant documents are readily available. All of the information that's going to be a necessity is readily available. So one of the issues we have when it comes to administering estates is the fact that is the fact that documents are not easily attainable because people tend to not know where to access these documents you know where they need to go in order to find these documents big problem because you need most of these documents to claim certain things right you need them because if you don't have access to them or your family doesn't have access to them it will mean that they can't claim so those are the things that can also delay the whole process because you want to be able to give the person who's administering the estate everything that they need so that they can get the job done right for example some people when they lose a loved one they can't find an id so that's something else in addition that has to be done now you know trying to get a, a documentation for this deceased uh, some people can't find, you know, the, the most basic documents which are necessary. So this then also tends to delay the administration process a bit. So, so as someone who has a family and is wanting to plan their estate and is not wanting their own family to go through the difficulties that they are going through, you might want to sit down with someone, have an estate planning session, think about the people that I said think about in your will. Obviously, there's a number of other people that you want to think about, but in terms of administering the estate itself, you also, or you mainly want to think about your executor because that person plays a heavy role in whether your administration is going to move slower or it's going to move faster or whether that person is going to act in the best interest of your family. Remember, that's a very volatile position which that person is being placed in. They are being placed into a fiduciary position. You know, they are taking care of the assets of the deceased in the meantime for the benefit of your beneficiaries. So you want to make sure that this is someone you trust completely, or even if it's not completely, but you have a lot of confidence 
that they have your family's best interest at heart. So these are the few things that can help you and also help you avoid going through an administration process. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure that you also just move it to somebody else so that they can also have a listen to it. This brings us to the end of our discussion today and I hope that you'll come back so that you can consume more content. And like I said, my name is Yolanda Mnyangeza and I'm an attorney and a director at Mnyangeza Attorneys. We will see you next time.